Hi, I'm with Dottie and Pepper, and we're gonna read chapter five, and who was George Washington Carver? The greatest good. George had no plans to leave Iowa State. He liked the faculty and students there, and they liked him. He was studying for a graduate degree in agriculture and was teaching young men and women too. It looked as if George was set for a long career at the school. But in April of 1896, he received a letter that changed his life. It was from educator and orator Booker T. Washington. Washington was perhaps the most famous black man in America in the late 1800s. In 1895, he gave a speech on at the Cotton States and International Exposition in Atlanta, Georgia. The speech has come to be called the Atlanta Compromise. Washington essentially urged blacks to accept the idea of separate but equal in exchange for education, job training, and fairness in the court system. He wanted blacks to work with whites, not against them to fight racism. Not everyone agreed with Booker T. Washington. Some of his critics in the civil rights movement felt that accepting separate but equal meant whites would always think blacks were not as good as they were. Booker T. Washington, of course, didn't believe that, but he believed that if blacks ever were to achieve true equality in the United States, they would need better education. That was why Booker jumped at the chance to start an all black school in Tuskegee, Alabama in 1881. And Tuskegee Institute opened in a rundown one room building that year with just $2,000 from the state of Alabama. The next year, the school purchased 100 acres of land and the campus began to develop. Now I'm going to read a little history about Booker T. Washington. He was born 1856 and died in 1915. Booker T. Washington was born into slavery. He grew up to become an educator, an author, and a well-known speaker. In 1881, he established the Tuskegee Institute in Tuskegee, Alabama because he felt that education was the best path for black people to achieve true equality. In his time, Washington was the most famous leader of the black community. In 1901, he became, he became the first black person to be officially invited to the White House when President Theodore Roosevelt asked him to dinner. Back to the story. The Tuskegee Institute. Tuskegee wasn't a traditional college like Iowa State that accepted only high school graduates. Instead, some of Tuskegee students had as little as fifth grade education. Many of their parents and grandparents had been slaves. They were there for hands-on learning they could use in their day-to-day -day lives. As part of their classes, some early Tuskegee students actually built the classrooms that rose on the new campus. Booker was still the president of the Tuskegee Institute when he wrote to George in 1896. The school was growing, Booker explained. He wanted to add a department of agriculture and he wanted George to be in charge of it. George had read about Booker's big Atlanta speech in the newspapers. George's beliefs about race relations 
were much the same as Booker's. George had lived among and worked with whites his whole life. He believed that working with whites was the best path to equality. And of course, George recognized the value of an education. So that is why George, even though he was perfectly happy in Iowa, at Iowa State, thought long and hard about Booker's offer. Tuskegee couldn't pay George as much money and didn't have the modern buildings or equipment. He would be leaving the comfort and security of one job for the uncertainty of another. But the one great ideal of my life is to be is to be the greatest good to the greatest number of my people. George wrote to Booker, so he accepted the job, finished up his graduate degree at Iowa State and arrived in Tuskegee in October 1896. And I actually looked up Google Translate and that is how you say Tuskegee. So there you go.